Welcome back to West Texas View. Welcome back, and we are here with Dr. Joy Anderson talking about some women's health care issues that uh, tend to come up frequently and that women often have questions about. And we had just talked about some of the changes in the policies and procedures and recommendations with regard to mammograms and pap smears and some of the new things that have come to the forefront in health care. Uh, and along those lines, I want to talk briefly with Dr. Anderson about uh, some of the uses and some of the pros and cons to ultrasounds and sonograms and that, you know, they're not always what we perceive them to be like uh, just for pregnant women just to check to the development of the baby. Sometimes it goes beyond that. So kind of talk to us a little bit about ultra ultrasound. The thing that makes me laugh is that I get so many pregnant women that think that they need an ultrasound or even want an ultrasound each time. Although ultrasounds are very safe tests, as far as we can tell, there was one study that was kind of debatable that talked about if you get this many ultrasounds during pregnancy, you're more likely to have a kid that's left-handed. Well, that's not the worst thing in the world. My husband's left-handed, you know, <laughs> and they say lefties are smarter, so who knows. But, um, you know, there's not any studies that it harms a person. But, you know, ask the woman who had an abnormal ultrasound and who got scared half to death because the doctor said, your baby has um, a cyst on its brain, or the part of the brain called the lateral ventricle is a little bit larger. And then we have a conversation where we sit down with the patient, and she's 20 weeks, mind you, feeling the baby move, you know, probably picked a name because she knows it's a boy or girl, and you have the conversation about, look, this could be a marker for um, something lethal, or it could be a marker for Down syndrome. Do you want an amniocentesis? And if you want an amniocentesis, which is a needle in your belly, would you terminate the pregnancy if your kid had these problems? And so, you know, there's a 1 in 20 false positive rate on ultrasounds, meaning out of 20 ultrasounds that we do on normal babies, one of them will have something that just scares the heck out of the mom. And likewise, for picking up Down syndrome, depending on who you read, there's issues with that too. Um, both of the Down's kids I've delivered were born to 19-year-old, 20-year-old women, and we missed them on um, quad screening testing, and we missed them on ultrasound too. And ultrasound is just a picture. That's all it is. I can take a picture of you and say you look pretty healthy, but it's not checking your cholesterol. It's not doing a mammogram. It is just a photograph. Um, I had a patient that had a whole bunch of nine pound kids and she came to me, she's like, Joy, this baby's huge, it's huge. And I thought, well, we're gonna get an ultrasound with a high risk doctor because that'll be better than ours and, and let's get a level two scan and, and find out because if it's over 11 pounds, we'll do a C-section. Well, the scan came back eight, seven eight pounds, seven ounces, and the baby was 11.7 when I delivered oh, it. Wow. And I'll tell you what, it was a beautiful delivery. One push, no tears, wonderful delivery. If I'd have known it was 11 and a half pounds, we'd be having a C-section. And so in a way, I'm glad it was wrong. Um, but there's a lot more situations where they're wrong the other direction, and they scare the heck out of the patient. Um, you know, my daughter had a finding on her ultrasound, and she's perfectly fine. Um, and so that's the problem, too. People don't understand. They think, I want to see a picture of my kid, but they don't want to hear it when, they, when we say, look, there's something potentially right. wrong with your baby. Or even better, they say, my ultrasound's normal. That means my baby's normal. You know, your kid could have ADHD. Your kid could get cancer when they're two. Ultrasounds don't pick up everything. They really don't. They're just like walking through Walmart is kind of how I joke with my patients. I'm pretty good walking through Walmart and pointing to a person and saying, you know, they probably got high, high cholesterol. They probably are going to have a heart attack when they're 70. But you know what? I'm wrong all the time. Right. And so it's the same thing. It really is the same thing. So do you have recommendations for mothers on what what might be considered? You're going to get different answers. You know, if somebody's high risk because they're advanced maternal age or they're a smoker or something like that, they might require more ultrasounds watching for growth. Um, if they have hypertension, if they had a problem with their last baby being growth restricted, we screen them a lot differently with more frequent ultrasounds. But um, what happens more times is those ultrasounds are wrong the other direction, like they say the baby's growth restricted when it's not. Um, it's, a, it's a decent test, but it's not for everyone, and there really is harm in doing it all the time. Wow. That's, that's really interesting to know, and that's, again, a perception. Yes. Uh, there's, there's misperceptions out there about what it's for and what it detects and what it doesn't detect, so that's very interesting information. Um, if you were to pinpoint right now maybe the one greatest health risk that face most women, what would you say it would be? Is it diet? Is it um, weight? Is it cancer? Um, probably, I would say trauma. <laughs> probably car wrecks and things like that, if you really look at numbers, depending on the person's age. Um, you know, I always want to send out to people to have the healthiest lifestyle. An accident can happen. It's called yeah. an accident for a reason. And there's not always things we can prevent in car wrecks, but you can wear your seatbelt. 
you can you know make sure that you get in your car that's relatively safe with airbags and make sure you put your kid in a car seat right. um, and so there's things we can do to minimize risk but just like you know cancers and things like that happen too so I think it's more a matter of doing the best that you can on everything and you know there's there's times when we've been wrong also you know osteoporosis you're less likely to get a fracture if you're a little bit overweight so you know I always hate harping on one thing or the other um, believe it or not there's a type of cancer that smoking prevents called uterine cancer and so I've never don't tell anyone that but um, you know there, we never want to tell anybody one overall rule certainly smoking's bad and certainly wear your seatbelt and there's going to be freak cases of, right. of other things but um, it's more a matter of making sure you're doing the right thing for yourself and your doctors on board with that also I, I think that I think that's really sound advice and, and you're very good you're you were very good about how you presented it because a lot of people you know want to think okay well if I can just lose 20 pounds I'll be perfectly healthy and I'll be fine or if I can quit smoking I will be perfectly fine and there's so much more to it than that and there's so much more involved in in the health, overall health of women and it, it, it takes pieces of everything yes it being, absolutely does being healthy well so what what age group of women do you feel like probably focuses more on their health? Is there one age group that really takes that time and attention to focus? I would say my perimenopausal women because they're not so much in the childbearing, um, hectic life that is childbearing um, and raising their children. And so they're kind of taking that as a time for themselves, um, which is not very frequent in women's lives that's to take right. time for ourselves. And so I think that's a, a good population to really do some lifestyle changes in. But I also think it's more important to catch the adolescents before they start doing the things mm -hmm. they shouldn't do. Um, and that is one thing just randomly that I wanted to bring up Please too. Um, we have an opportunity with adolescents to not traumatize them as gynecologists. And so we really try very hard when an adolescent comes to see me for contraception or something like that. You know, most of the time, I don't need to do an exam on them until they're 21. And so, um, you know, I always encourage people to bring their adolescents in if they're having problems with their periods or things like that. And a lot of what people think is coming to the gynecologist as being a pap smear, we do so much more than that. So much more. That is, that's wonderful. And so while you're talking about that, uh, it, our time has almost come to a close, but what I do want to remind everybody is that Texas Tech offers a wide range of services in many, many different specialties, and their access is great. Uh, they, they are able to get patients, in, new patients in, and um, they, they take Medicaid and, and private pay insurance as well. So it is a wonderful opportunity. It is a great clinic uh, with a lot of services to offer a family uh, and from children all the way up to geriatrics. So please uh, take advantage of the services that are offered. Thank you, Dr. Anderson, for joining Thank us. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming, uh, for being part of this this morning, and have a wonderful day. Thanks for joining us for News West 9's West Texas View with Johnny Lou Avery. This has been a public affairs presentation of KWAB-TV and KWES-TV.